Last time on Round Sailing, Johan and I explored the Berry Arm glaciers in Prince William Sound, Alaska. There were waterfalls, ice and spectacular nature. Another narrow passage between an island and what I guess is also the mainland. It's like a big peninsula going out. So now we are in the northern part of uh, Prince William Sound. So we anchor for the night uh, three miles south from here. It was a little bit tricky to find a good spot. We had to try three different spots uh, until we could find a good holding. Today we are going to the south part of the sound, so we'll have a long day uh, ahead of us. I think we have uh, 40 nautical miles, uh, that's around 8 hours, 7 to 8 hours. And uh, our plan is to leave the sound tomorrow and sail across the Alaskan Gulf to southeast Alaska. Uh, there's a high pressure coming in tomorrow and the wind turns um, to the west which means that we will have downwind uh, to the, going to the east. Uh, so it's a good weather window and we have to take it because uh, there's, there's not that many of them. And the good thing is now we can sail as well because there hasn't been too much of sailing up here so far. Um, and another thing is that we have hardly been ashore. I mean, Johan hasn't been ashore for a week now as a walk on land. I went ashore yesterday when we were at the waterfall in the glacier, <laughs> it felt strange. So I mean many of the anchorages here there are, some of them have beaches but some not and they, yeah, there's a lot of beers around. So we prefer not to, to go on land here. I mean we've seen beers in uh, many of the anchorages we've been in. And uh, yeah, I just have to check the navigation. Home. There's an area here in front of us in the channel where it's only, according to the chart, it will be 3 meters. And we're at 2.1 on the chart. Up there wasn't very accurate, so it goes slow here because it's really low tide now. So it could be that it's actually less than 3 meters. This is strange, it should be 3 meters here, but it shows 20 and a half. Range. We have you know, like only 20 meters here, and it be, according to the chart, it should be free. But it was the same place as this anchorage we stayed overnight. It should be like no water, or uh, maybe one meter, but there was like 10. So I don't know if it's from this earthquake in 1962 that has shifted the, the soundings. Esther Passage is 7 nautical miles long and exits in a more open area of the sound.
We found a massive sea lion colony, so we just had to make a detour and have a look at it. There's, I don't know, like a hundred? hundred or so? Can you hear them? <laughs> there, I guess there's there's poo. Oh, they're fighting quite a lot. They're fighting all the time. There's hundreds of them. Stellar sea lions can live for 20 to 30 years, and the males can weigh up to 1,100 kilos. The females average a weight of around 300 kilos. The constant fighting between the males are over territories on the rock. So we're continuing heading south. We left the sea lions and uh, now the fog rolled in and drizzling rain. I cannot see. Oh, there was an animal there. I can't see much in front of the bow. Maybe a couple of hundred meters. So we have, uh, I think, 30 miles to go. Um, quite a lot. So I think we'll arrive late this evening. Yuan is down and making some lunch for us and I'm keeping watch. Well, I can't see much, but I'm looking at the plotter and see the ships that have AIS, checking the course. You have to check out all the time, see if there is any boat that don't have AIS. And there's actually a lot of them here. Um, yeah, it's rainy. It's grey and rainy. And it's the 29th of July today. <laughs> almost see the sun. I can see it behind the clouds and over there above the island where we're going to anchor tonight I see blue sky. So the high pressure is coming in now. Great. We haven't seen the sun and blue sky in uh, eight days now. <laughs>
It was so nice to see dolls, porpoises again. And this time they swam with us for quite a while. Probably it's uh, gravel or some small stones on the bottom, so the anchoring should be alright. Okay. It's low tide now, so we can go pretty close to shore. And the tide, uh, yeah, it swings around 3 meters here. So it's not too much, but you still have to think about it when you were angry. One of the best things about cruising here is to anchor in the wilderness alone and away from civilization. There are no signs of humanity or man-made impact. But if you dig in the sand on the beaches in Prince William Sound, you could still find sticky oil from the Exxon Valdez catastrophe that happened almost 30 years ago. of Prince William Sound where we will exit and uh, yeah, set course towards Southeast Alaska. We have 306 nautical miles to Lutuya Bay where we would like to anchor for one night. Um, it's a very special place, we will tell you more about it later. And then we have 50 more miles until we reach Southeast Alaska. We'll go to a little town called Elfin Cove and on Thursday, today is Monday, and on Thursday we expect to arrive in Southeast Alaska. Uh, that will be the beginning of the next adventure, the next cruise, big cruising area. So, super excited for that. It was a really calm night. It was so strange because I actually dreamt that we woke up in the middle of the night and I looked outside the windows and I saw that we had been dragging anchor all the way until an industrial area with tons of uh, like big ships and like we had been dragging over streets and all kinds of things so apparently on the hard uh, which was very strange <laughs> but I just got that feeling you know when you oh no we've been dragging anchor but everything was just fine it's been super calm so quiet it was a beautiful anchorage according to the forecast we think that we need to uh, motor until uh, noon more or less and then we hope to uh, be able to sail and tomorrow Tuesday there will be coming a little bit more wind we will have around 
20-25 knots downwind and uh, yeah, so I think we will make good speed the waves won't be that big because it's been calm for many days now before um, said maximum 2 meters um, so yeah, I hope it will be a good passage um, I mean crossing the Alaskan Gulf it's a long stretch and there's uh, only one stop in between you can make and it's still pretty far uh, to that stop and after that stop so because this weather window isn't that very isn't that long uh, we decided to don't stop there in the middle it's called Jakutat we'll just pass that and go straight to Lituya Bay There's some really sick currents here, like these whirlpools that just spins and in all directions. We're right at the entrance to Prince William Sound, so I guess there's these two capes, they make the tide spin in all directions. We should have the tide with us now, the, or the current, but it's actually against us. But then all of a sudden it just releases and the boat accelerates. Uh, yeah, it's kind of weird. It changes direction really fast. So. Really strong world pools up here. So right now we have a broad reach, 125 degrees, in maybe, I don't know, 15 uh, knots of wind, doing 6, point, yeah, six to 6.5 knots of speed. And we have uh, one reef in the main, because the wind is going to build and uh, occasionally it's, uh, it's gusting up to 18 to 19. So. And, uh, <coughs> Uh, the wind pilot is steering at the moment, so if we were on the outer pilot, I think we'll uh, kept full main, but it's a bit easier for the wind pilot to steer with one reef in the main. Yeah, the Pacific High is moving north, so that's where the wind is coming from. Uh, and that's going to last until Friday, or Thursday, and then there is a low. Uh, so. The plan is to be in uh, Elfin Cove by then, before this low comes in. Earlier today we had a small uh, leak on the boat again. <laughs> it was uh, a hose actually. Not the clamps, but uh, it was a connection between uh, two hoses. And the connection part between those had um, broken apart. There was, uh, it was not a pressurized hose either, it was uh, from the drainage from the, um, the sink in the kitchen or in the galley. So, um, but before I uh, realized where it was coming from I was a bit worried because it was salt water and uh, yeah, I didn't know what, where it was coming from and it was leaking not a lot but uh, enough to make me a bit worried uh, but we closed all the seacocks and then it stopped so then I realized okay that it must be in some of the hoses connecting to the seacocks because there were no leaks at the actual seacocks so we solved that and uh, yeah now the sailing is good it's just this fog you know we're when you looked at the forecast yesterday, uh, it said that it should be sunny, no clouds today, really nice weather. 
and it was for a couple of hours today but now when the fog moves in it's getting really chilly because it's the moisture in the air and yeah the visibility is maybe down to yeah it's always a bit hard to tell but I would guess 300 meters maybe 400 good sailing right now. Downwind, 10 knots of wind, doing over 6 knots of speed. A couple of fishing boats around us. You one, saw, you one saw one this morning actually that didn't have AIS. I was sitting out here this morning for like an hour but then it started raining. So now I'm sitting down below and I come up here every 10 minutes to have a look around. The sailing is definitely more demanding in these waters and we spend most of the time off watch sleeping. day at sea. Uh, we had our second night, uh, been quite rolly, especially during the night. The wind picked up a little bit and yeah, it was very rolly. Mm. Now it has calmed down a little bit. We have the wind is around nine knots only and uh, we had to jibe and move the sails. Mm, changed the position of the sails and uh, we're now heading straight for Elfin Cove and we will arrive yeah late this evening hopefully before it gets dark if we don't make it before it gets dark we might just pick an anchorage um, before Elfin Cove so we're not gonna go to uh, Lituya Bay uh, it was bad timing with um, uh, the tides and currents because uh, you have to enter on a slack and also depart on a slack uh, before a flood. We would have arrived uh, like at uh, 2 and had to wait then outside um, for 3 hours and then we would have to leave at 5 a.m. so it would only be a couple of hours and on Friday there is a big nasty low coming in which will affect the whole gulf very windy and bad weather so we could only stay stay there for the night and then so we decided to go straight to Elfin Cove Lituya Bay is quite a special place it's the place where the biggest tsunami wave has ever been seen it's called a mega tsunami it was a 500 meter high wave um, caused of, uh, by a really strong earthquake and so made the whole land in it's a pretty deep bay so in the end of the bay uh, the earthquake made the land fall down and caused this huge wave this has happened twice actually with the uh, 30-40 years in between um, 
and so it, now it's overdue. So it's kind of creepy staying in there. But it would have been cool. Um, when these tsunamis hit, there were actually people in there and boats. Some survived and has told this like extraordinary, incredible story of what happened. Uh, they just the first sign they saw was they heard all the birds were flying away. And they thought, okay, that's strange. And then they could see the wave. And when you're inside the bay, we've heard that you can see on the trees uh, where the water went up and so got affected by salt water and where there's like a border. And the same on the mountains, on the rocks. So that's a pretty cool place. As we sail by Lituya Bay, the clouds clear just enough to let us see the peaks of Mount Fairweather. It's Marlin's shift. I've been sleeping a bit, so I just helped her to adjust the wind vane now. That's why I don't have a shirt on. <laughs> it's not that warm. Um, yeah, 50 miles to go to Elfin Cove. And we're starting to see these wonderful mountains up there. And they're really tall. And uh, yeah, the glacier is coming down from them. And it's quite nice weather now. The wind is starting to come down doing 6.3 knots and we're going to hopefully we're going to arrive in Elfinkel before it's dark tonight around uh, 10 11 or something yeah it was a pity that we couldn't go to Litua Bay but that's how it is with sailing sometimes you can't do what you want to do but Anyhow, I'm really looking forward to come to uh, Helfin Cove. Get some rest, buy some more food. We actually don't have much left now. And uh, yeah, just relax for a bit. We still have one reef in the mainsail. Yes, uh, it's a bit more, a bit more comfortable. But also now we're closing into the mountains and according to the forecast there are some patches where the wind is going to be around 10 knots higher than it is right here. So that's why we keep it in so we can just, uh, just reef on the head sail if we need to. It's a bit quicker. Filming with a gimbal while sailing really shows the movement of the boat and the ocean. It was extremely rolly due to current against large swell. Yeah, we're approaching Elfin Cove. We started the motor to motor the last bit. We have a quite strong current against us, over two knots. So we're using the headsail and the motor to just yeah, get there before darkness. It's going to be dark in uh, yeah, two hours, 11 o'clock roughly. And we have around 10 miles to go. So when we entered uh, Cross Sound, uh, which is the area we're in now, there was pretty strong tide rips out there. Because of, yeah, we have not that strong winds, but it, it has been blowing pretty much last night like 25 knots uh, and a bit during the day so big waves uh, and two knots against that so the waves were pretty big for a while out there but now they have eased out a bit when we're 
further in, but uh, yeah, we still have some current against us. And the wind is beginning to die out, it's down to 9 knots now. So overall, the sail from Prince William Sound to here, Southeast Alaska, has been really good. Uh, when we left, there was a small craft advisory. Uh, yeah, not gale, but strong winds, 25 knots. I think they were gusting to 30 for a while. But that was perfect going downwind, so it was really not a problem. We made it to Elfin Cove, just as it got dark, and hit the bed right away. Thank you for watching. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook for real-time updates and stay tuned for next week's episode.